Hi, I'm Pastor Cheryl. Welcome back to this week's study on the Maserat. You know, we all enjoy listening to or watching a good story. Good stories have a hero and a villain, plus an action-packed plot line that includes a resolution. Well, long before television and books, people gathered around campfires and listened to storytellers as they shared events from history and told stories of heroic feats. Many of these were true renditions of actual events. It was how a population learned their history. This oral history still happens today in remote places in the world. God has generously shared with us the true story of our hero, Jesus, and his triumph over the villain Satan. This story was written across the night sky and the stars. Now the oral tradition of its telling dates back to Adam himself. Over time though, different storytellers embellished the story with their own twist and created their own mythology from God's truth. And the original story has been lost to time. But God's original story is still there in the night sky. And we are rediscovering it as we look at the names of the constellations and the names of the stars themselves. Welcome back to this series on the Maserat, God's Gospel Written in the Stars. God painted his message of salvation across the sky in what we now call the Zodiac. The Zodiac pictures 12 major signs around the elliptic, which was the apparent path that the sun traveled through the heavens. If you painted a picture of the whole sky on the ceiling, you would have a 360 degree circle that is called an elliptic. The elliptic is divided into 12 houses or mansions, or if you will, tabernacles for the sun. And the sun travels around this elliptic. And on the elliptic, there are 12 major constellations known as the signs or the constellations of the zodiac. And in each of these 12 houses, there are also three smaller constellations or deacons, which further explain the meaning of these symbols. Last week, we looked at the constellation Sagittarius the Archer. Today, we'll look at the fifth house of the zodiac, which is Capricornus, the goat. The sun is in the house of Capricornus from December 22nd through January 19th. This house tells the story of life out of death. We see Christ, the sacrifice, for our sins as we are made spiritually alive. Capricornus also begins the second book of the Maserath. The Zodiac is divided into three books of four houses each, all with their own theme. The first book concentrated on who Christ is to his people. We saw him presented as the incarnate Son of God the great redeemer, the sufferer, and finally the conqueror over sin and Satan. The second book, which we begin today, relates to the fruits of Christ's work. We see him through the second book as the sacrifice for our sins, the living water, our liberator from the slavery of sin, and the crowned lamb, the ruler of all creation. In the final book, we'll see Christ as our judge, the coming prince and savior, our protector and our, vic and our victor over Satan. So please join me in prayer as we begin today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for preserving this true history, this true gospel that you've given us, painted in the sky. Lord, help us, um, help us rediscover your truths as we unpack the names of these stars and the original names of these constellations. and Lord, I just pray that you would anoint my words today and anoint the ears of everyone who's hearing this message. Let it all be for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to start with a reading from Leviticus, beginning in chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. And I'm reading from the voice translation. And it happened on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, take a bull calf as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering, each without blemish and offer both before the Lord. Then say to the Israelites, take a male goat as a sin offering and a calf and a lamb. 
both one year old without blemish as burnt offering. And then dropping down to Leviticus 16 verses 7 through 9. Then he will take the two goats and present them to me at the entrance of the congregation tent. There he will cast lots for the goats, one lot for me and one lot for the scapegoat. Whichever goat my lot falls upon, Aaron will offer that goat as a purification offering for sin. Leviticus 9, 15-16 Now with his own sins covered, Aaron was able to offer the sacrifices for the masses. So he took the goat for the purification offering, slaughtered it, and offered it as reparation for the people's sins. He did this in the same, in the same way he presented the first offering. He brought the burnt offering as well and offered it in accordance with the ordinances that God had handed to Moses. The first sign of the second book of the Masoroth is Capricornus, the goat. The goat is a sacrificial animal. Um, the Capricornus is a picture of a sea goat, in the front half being a goat and the second half a fish. The goat is in a fallen position with one leg doubled under his body and the head is forward and he's in a dying position. Christ is our sacrifice, cut off from the land of the living and stricken for the transgressions of his people. The back half of the sea goat though is the tail of a fish which is living and vigorous. Here we have a picture of what Christ accomplished by his death. He brought forth the living body of his church referred to in scripture as fishes. Fish are a symbol of life. Early Christians identified themselves with the sign of the fish. And Christ is the sacrificial goat of the sin offering and the begetter of a body of reborn people, the church, the congregation of those quickened and saved. In Hebrew, the name of this constellation is Gedi, which means a kid, a goat. It also means the cut off. In Latin, Capricornus means the atonement. So here, just in the very name of the constellation, we see the goat cut off for our atonement. This becomes even clearer when we look at the names of some of the brightest stars in this constellation. Gedi and Debi are the most prominent stars in this constellation. And in Hebrew, Arabic, and Syriac, these names mean the cut off the hewn down, and the sacrifice slain. El Gedi means the kid. Dinab al Gedi means the sacrifice cometh. And Ma'asad means the slaying. The names of the stars within this constellation show us the symbol of sacrificial death. Now, the pagan myths concerning this sign also correspond with these interpretations. The goat is often referred to as Pan, Bacchus, or some divine person. According to mythology, the gods were feasting alongside a river when a bad storm forced them to assume another shape to escape. Bacchus took the form of a goat and jumped into the river and part of his body turned into a fish. The story, twisted and paganized, still retains something of the original idea. Jesus, the Son of God, took upon himself the form of a sin-bearer and sacrifice, and he sank into the deep waters of death as our substitute for our sins. Now Dagon, the half-fish god of the Philistines, and Oannes, the half-fish god of the Babylonians, also connect with this zodiac sign. Dagon means fruitfulness, the seed producing. Dagon was the god of seeds and harvest and was the same as Horus of the Egyptians. Jesus Christ is the seed of the woman, fallen and dying in the goat, but producing living fish in the church. Horus takes the character of the meek and the silent sufferer who brings a horn of blessing and plenty. Oannes was depicted as half man and half fish, a merman, who rose from the seas to teach primitive Babylonians the secrets of wisdom. In truth, it is Jesus, the seed of the woman, dying as a sacrifice who teaches and blesses. The pagan myths still embody the exact story of the sign. And just as in the other houses, Capricornus is accompanied by three lesser constellations or deacons. The first deacon of Capricornus is Segeta. 
It is the picture of a shot and killing arrow. It appears alone, speeding toward its aim. Psalm 38, 2 reads, The arrow from your bow has have the arrows from your bow have penetrated my flesh. Your hand has come down hard upon me. Romans 3, 26. This expression of God's restorative justice displays in the present that he is just and righteous and that he makes right those who trust and commit themselves to Jesus. Sagitta is a picture of the arrow that comes from the bow of God. This arrow goes out against unrighteousness and uncleanliness and wickedness and it is destined for the heart of Christ. When Jesus Christ went to the cross to die, God bent his bow and let loose the arrow of his wrath, which pierced the very heart of Christ. Christ was made sin for us. The Lamb of God was made the sacrificial goat of God. And there the arrow of God's wrath was unleashed against him, sticking fast in his heart. Christ, who knew no sin, was made propitiation for our sin. Now, many people today want God to be merciful to them and relax his holy standard. But God will not compromise. His holy standard remains. He has promised that he will not go back on his word and our transgressions will be met with the rod. The arrow of his wrath will go forth and find our sin, whatever it may be. That arrow has been unleashed and is coming toward your sin. It will either stick fast in your heart or it will stick in the heart of Christ. Now, if you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, the arrow, the deserved punishment for your sins, will stick in Christ's heart instead of yours. See, he bore the brunt of God's wrath in your place. Listen to Exodus 19.4. You are eyewitnesses of all that I did to the Egyptians. You saw how I snatched you from the bonds of slavery and carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Deuteronomy 32, 11 through 12 reads, Just as an eagle stirs up its nest, encouraging its young to fly, and then hovers over them in case they need help, and spreads its wings and catches them if they fall, and carries them up high on its wings, so the Eternal guided Jacob through the wilderness without the help of any foreign god. The second deacon in Capricornus is Aquila, the eagle. It's a picture of a pierced, wounded, and falling eagle. In all of the ancient zodiacs, the eagle is always seen as falling. It is the one who has been struck by the arrow and is now falling from its flight. The brightest star in this constellation is named Altair, which means the wounding. Other stars in the constellation are Terra Red, which means the wounded or torn in Hebrew, and al Kher, which means the piercing. In the tail of the eagle is al Okab, which means wounded in the heel. The eagle is the natural enemy of the serpent. The Lord is referred to a number of times in scriptures as an eagle, and this constellation shows us a picture of Christ, wounded by the arrow of God's wrath for our sins and plummeting to the ground. Now the third deacon of the sign of Capricornus is Delhinius the dolphin. Psalm 42, 7 says, In the roar of your waterfall, ancient depths surge, calling out to the deep. All your waves break over me. Am I drowning? This deacon is a picture of a great fish, the dolphin, leaping upwards. As the dolphin is known for leaping out of the waves into the air, so Christ, after his enemies thought they had done away with him once and for all, suddenly emerged from the waves of death as the great conqueror of death in the grave. He is the principal fish in a great multitude of fishes. In ancient mythology, the dolphin was the most sacred and honored of all fishes. This deacon is a symbol of life and a resurrection from death. Capricornus illustrates the primary evangelical truth. There is no more central or important doctrine of the Christian faith than this, that our pure and sinless Son of God, having assumed our nature to take on the sins of the world all upon himself, 
bore the agonies of death as the sacrifice and propitiation of our guilt. Luke 24 verses 46 to 47 reads, and this is Jesus talking, this is what the scripture says, that the promised anointed one should suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, that in his name a radical change of thought and life should be preached, and that in his name the forgiveness of sins should be preached, beginning in Jerusalem and extending to all nations. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15 read, Since we, the children, are all creatures of flesh and blood, Jesus took on flesh and blood, so that by dying he could destroy the one who held power over death, the devil, and destroy the fear of death that has always held people captive. Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 through 6. And from Jesus the anointed, the witness who is true and faithful, the first to emerge from death's cold womb, the chosen ruler over all the kings and rulers of the earth, to the one who loves us and liberated us from the grip of our evil deeds through his very own blood, and who established us to be his kingdom and priests for God, his Father. May glory and power be his throughout all the ages. Amen. In Revelations 5, verse 9, Then they sang a new song, Four living creatures and twenty-four elders, you are worthy to receive the scrolls to break its seals. Because you were slain with your blood, you redeemed for God people from every tribe and language, every tribe and language, people from every race and nation. The story that this constellation tells is an ancient story, on which hangs the only hope that ever came to Adam's race. It is a picture of our sin bearer and the atonement for our guilt, lest we die unpardoned and unsanctified. Through his death and blood shedding, we must find our life or the tr our true life in Christ. So I need to ask, where are you in this story? Are you one of the unsanctified, unpardoned sinners with no hope of a future? Capricornus tells a story of hope. Without Christ's atonement, we would all be without hope of redemption from our sins. If you're ready to accept Christ's sacrifice for your sins, please join me in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for being my atonement for sin. I admit that I'm a sinner and I am sorry for my sins. I acknowledge that you are the Son of God and I ask that you to be my Lord and Savior. Please help me live a life that is pleasing to you. Amen. If you prayed this prayer just now for the very first time, you have passed from spiritual death to spiritual life in Christ. Please tell someone. You can tell me if you'd like. Send me an email at CherylPickford at gmail.com and I'll help you get started on your new walk of faith. I hope you're all enjoying this series on the Maseroth, God's Gospel in the Stars. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any installments. Next week, we'll take a look at Christ as our liberator, as illustrated in the sign of Pisces. Feel free to share this message on your own social media outlet and invite your friends to join this study. May God richly bless you until we meet again.